the Nicomachean Ethics. Aristotle was born in Macedonia in 384 BC at the age of 17. He went to Athens where he studied with Plato at his academy for 20 years. Shortly thereafter, he was summoned back to Macedonia to tutor the 13-year-old Alexander the Great. From there, he returned to Athens where he established the Lyceum and explored and expounded and taught the entire field of human knowledge, logic, metaphysics, theology, history, politics, ethics, aesthetics, psychology, anatomy, biology, zoology, botany, astronomy, meteorology, and the ancient equivalents of physics and chemistry. His writings have been extraordinarily influential since ancient times while the Lyceum lived on for some 500 years after its founder's death as a stimulus, a challenge, an inspiration, and a formative influence on subsequent thought. It was scarcely matched and never surpassed the cap of most epic lineage ever. Socrates taught Plato, Plato taught Aristotle, they all taught us a lot. This book is named after Aristotle's son who essentially edited his lecture notes. It's fascinating to imagine Aristotle using these notes to teach 2,300 years ago. As per the intro above, the Ethics has 10 books. The first four are the most practical and where we will be spending all of our time. You know all those Aristotle quotes on happiness and habits and the doctrine of the mean. You'll find most of them in this classic. As you can imagine, the book is packed with big ideas. We're obviously only going to scratch the surface of this masterpiece, but I'm excited to share some of favorites we can apply to our lives today. So let's jump straight in. Happiness, that's the ultimate aim, the supreme good that we're all after. In Happier, Tao Ben Sheha calls, this the ultimate currency, but I wish we could interview Aristotle for the podcast so we can ask him to explain what the Greek word we weekly translate as happiness actually means. The word Aristotle uses to capture the ultimate aim of life is not happiness as we use the word. It was the Greek word eudaimonia. Jonathan Barnes, the author of the introduction to this Penguin classic makes the very strong point that to call a man eudaimon is to say something about how he lives and what he does. The notion of eudaimonia is closely tied in a way in which the notion of happiness is not to success. The eudaimon is someone who makes a success of his life and actions, who realizes his aims and ambitions as a man, who fulfills himself. In other words, the ultimate aim of life is not happiness as we know it, but more of a sense of actualization. True happiness, in the Aristotelian sense, must include the successful actualization of our potentialities. That is the ultimate purpose of life, the highest good. The summum bonum, which leads us back to Barnes and another one of his brilliant points, it will not do to replace happiness by success or fulfillment as a translation of eudaimonia. The matter is too complicated for any such simple remedy, and in what follows I shall continue to employ the word happiness, guarding it with a pair of inverted commas. But it is worth considering Aristotle's recipe for eudaimonia with the notion of success in mind, the ethics we are thus supposing is not telling us how to be morally good men or even how to be humanly happy. It is telling us how to live successful human lives, how to fulfill ourselves as men. And all of that hints at why virtue is so important, which leads us to our next idea on how we go about achieving eudaimonia. We know that eudaimonia means more than just happiness. Break it down and you'll see that it literally means good plus soul or as Aristotle states it here, Happiness is a virtuous activity of the soul. In short, want eudaimonic happiness, live with virtue, which leads us to my favorite word, arid. As we've discussed, although the word arid directly translates as virtue or excellence, it has a deeper meaning, something closer to expressing the best version of yourself. Eudaimonic happiness doesn't happen in a day, or a week or a month. We're never exonerated. It takes a lifetime of excellence to actualize. Quotes from Aristotle. Moral virtues, like crafts, are acquired by practice and habituation. Aristotle So too it is easy to get angry. Anyone can do that, or to give and spend money, but to feel or act toward the right person, to the right extent, at the right time, for the right reason, in the right way, that is not easy, and it is not everyone that can do it. Hence to do these things well is a rare laudable and fine achievement. Aristotle 
Rash people are impetuous, eager before danger arrives, but shifty when it is actually present, whereas courageous ones are keen at the time of action, but calm beforehand. Aristotle Those states that are praiseworthy we call virtues. Aristotle 